we love you and thank you. Truly, thank you for the people that are here this morning. Father, they wanted to be here. Father, they have a desire. They have a hunger. Father, please fill that desire. Help them to be full this morning of the Word and of you in your presence. Father, please be with us this morning. And help us to understand what is truth and what we should do and how we should view you and your Word and how we should look at this life around us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today we're talking about vanity of vanities. Now, that sounds like a word that we've heard before, but we may not exactly know the correct definition or we might not understand what's going on. So I'm going to read a little definition here for us. Vanity or vain means hollowness, something that is hollow, without real significance, value, or importance, or worthless. And then also, the old meaning is also senseless or foolish. So we can get a sense of what is being said when we hear vanity of vanities. And that was from our scripture verse this morning. We heard that. That was coming from uh, Solomon, one of the wisest men. He asked for God for one thing, and that was to be wise so that he can know how to serve him and to be able to help his people. And God gave him that, but he also blessed him with a lot of other stuff too. Amen. Anybody want to be wise this morning? Yes. Amen. All right. We're going to need to know how to look at this life. All right. Life is pointless without God. Anybody agree with that? I've been there, all right? I've been uh, existing, and that's what you call it. And I, I existed without God, and it was pointless. Every day became this string of endless routine that just was useless and didn't matter. So I can see vanity uh, in my life without God. It is vain if you aren't living for God. That is where you find true vanity. It's when you live a life without God. Thankfully, I trust and believe that everybody that is in this building says, I do not want to live a vain life because I want God in my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But everything becomes pointless or vain. Everything. A rich man becomes bored with his things and never can have enough. Have you ever seen a a rich person, they have what? How many mansions? They don't have just one. They have multiple mansions, right? They have multiple cars. They have multiple wardrobes. They have multiple everything because they can never be satisfied with those things. And then if you ever ask a rich man, why are you still striving to get money? Because I can never have enough. I want more. And you will never have enough. And it will never be enough. Because we all have a hunger for something. But we don't always know what it is. When we were born, God placed a hunger inside of us. But it was a hunger for Him. And if we live all of our life trying to satiate that hunger or fill that hunger, we will never do it unless we fill it with Him and His ways and His Word. Because that is the only way you will ever get fooled. And you may search for all kinds of things in this life to try to fill that void, and you will never fill it until you fill it with Him. Amen. Because that is the only way to fill it. That's right. And people look for various things. People look to find it in love. They look to find it in uh, <clears throat> different substances like alcohol or drugs of various kinds. They look to find it in different pleasures of various kinds different activities of various kinds. But you will never fill the void unless it is filled with God. You will never feel full until He is there. But yes, the rich man will be, become bored of his things and he will never be satisfied. Even love without God becomes stale and stagnant and turns sour. Even if you find the greatest love of your life and you do not have God together, even that love that you have will turn sour. Amen. And it will become stale. 
I don't know if you've ever experienced that in your life, but that is just how it goes. Everything will lose its flavor. Have you ever chewed on a piece of gum before? Oh, yeah. Man, that gum tastes good, doesn't it? <laughs> tastes good for a little bit, but then it starts to lose its flavor, doesn't it? Man, it's bland. Where'd all that flavor go? You spit that piece out, you pop a new piece in, don't you? Well, you never run out of those pieces because they will always lose their flavor until Willy Wonka invents us uh, a new kind that just never runs out of flavor. But <clears throat> nevertheless... Everything loses its flavor. Everything. Unless you have God in your life. Do you live a life of substance? Or is it superficial? Just on the surface. surface, No real depth to it. Or is it meaningful? Full of meaning. Or is it a life of fleeting pleasures and pleasantries? A casual existence. No passion for what really matters. We need to live a life lived with true purpose. When you walk in the purpose and plan that God has set up for me, for you in your life, from the foundation and the beginning of the before he even created the world, he had a plan for you, and when you're walking in that plan, you feel satisfied. You learn to become content. Amen. And you can be satisfied with whatever you have. Amen. And there's no greater feeling. Amen. There's no greater feeling to be walking in the purpose that God designed you for. Now, I've, I wrote a story one time about a, a lawnmower. This lawnmower was setting out to figure out what its purpose was in life and he he came across these hedge trimmers and they were sitting there trimming these hedges and he says hey i got blades i think i could do that so he hopped himself up on the the you know the hedges there and he trimmed those things all the way down to the root and he said uh oh what did i do i messed up and the hedge trimmer says you run my bushes get out of here so the little lawnmower kept trucking along I don't know what to do with my life. And he saw a chainsaw cutting into a tree. Man, that looks fun. I got blades. I think I could try that. Well, he started to try to cut the tree down and just... And he bogged his blades down. He just couldn't do it. Well, the chainsaw laughed at him and said, Get out of here, you useless thing. And he trucked on down the road. He just didn't know what to do with his life because he was not fulfilling what he was designed to do. And then he saw something that looked just like him. <coughs> another lawnmower cutting up cutting grass and he said wow let me try that so he got out there and he started doing the same thing he was fulfilling his purpose and he figured out who he was meant to be and he left happy he left joyful a lot of us are like that lawnmower a lot of us just don't know what to do with ourselves sometimes. God designed us for a purpose, but we don't know what that purpose is. And then until you figure that out or until God reveals it to you, you're going to be just like the lawnmower. Well, this person's doing that. Let me try that out. Oh, I guess I'm not good at that. And you don't feel fulfilled. And until you have that, you will feel that way. But inside of God and on His side... He will reveal it to you. He wants you to know. Because He set a plan in motion and wants you to walk in it. But you've got to ask Him, what is it? But He'll show you. He truly will. But we need to live a life lived with true purpose. A life focused on eternity and not this life. I know it's hard to do because there's all these different things that are going around. All these different things that are designed to distract you and take your attention away of what is truly important and what that important thing is, is eternity and the gospel and getting other people on board with the truth of that gospel. That they too can be saved from their sin. That they too have someone who paid that ransom for them. Right? 
That is our true purpose. At, and we all have varying degrees of how we f help fulfill that purpose, but that is the ultimate mission. It's helping others get to have Jesus in their life as you do. That's the ultimate purpose. That is how you can have a life that is not vain. A life that is geared towards God and His will and plan for your life. Life becomes vanity when it's not lived for God, though. Let's look at Ecclesiastes. Now, this is going to be from uh, Solomon. Like I said, he's the, the man with all the wisdom. So let's see what he's got to say for us, all right? Now, this is coming from a man who was a king of Israel. He had it all. He had many wives. He had many riches. He had people uh, coming from all over saying, man, we've heard about all the cool things you've invented and all the things you've done for your land. He was famous. He had it all. So let's listen to what the man who had it all had to say. All right, the words of the preacher. This is Ecclesiastes 1, 1 through 11. Now, this is the type of book that if you read through it, you could kind of get a little depressed. Yeah. But if you come to the final end in the chapter, which we will read, you will see the conclusion of the matter. All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 1, 1 through 11. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king of Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities. He starts it out. <laughs> says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. He says it again. All is vanity. This is what the wisest man has to tell us. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes. I kind of feel that way sometimes, folks. Whenever I see all these different crazy things going on, what my generation is coming up with. Oh my goodness, I get sick at it sometimes. I know you do too. Some of the things that we have to witness and see on TV. How all these generations, each generation is worse than the one before it. And it will continue to be that way, unfortunately, until Jesus is returned and He fixes this whole big ball of mess. It's going to keep getting worse, so prepare yourselves. But this is what He's saying. One generation passes away and another one comes. But the, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. And the rivers run into the sea. Yet the sea is not full to the place from which the rivers come. There they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. He's telling, I've seen it all, folks. I've watched everything. I've analyzed everything. i got the wisest mind that anybody's ever existed, and i figured it out. It's all vanity. Everything's vain, folks. That's what he's telling us. You got an ear that can never be satisfied. You want to keep listening to beautiful music? You want to keep listening to pleasant things? It will never be satisfied. You got an eye that keeps wanting to see uh, desirable things? It'll never be satisfied. You got a hunger? Your belly, it's always going to be hungry. You're always going to want food again. You got all these different things running a rat race. It's all vanity. He's finally come to the conclusion, folks. But let's, let's see what it happens in Ecclesiastes 12. So we started out with vanity of vanities, all right? Now, I, I would like to see, and hopefully if you've never read this uh, whole book in the Bible, please go back and read Ecclesiastes to get the full picture, okay? But I'm kind of giving you the, the, the short end version. I'm giving you the synopsis, and I gave you the intro and the, and the conclusion, but here we go. Ecclesiastes 12. 
Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. Oh, anybody feeling difficult days? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Sometimes we come to the end of our road and I just do not want to live another day. You've ever felt that way? I don't care if I live one more day. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low, also they are afraid of height and of tears in the way. When the almond tree blossoms and grasshoppers is a burden and desire fails, for man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Basically saying at the end of your life, when everything is finally closing down, when everything's coming to an end, when everything's uh, drawing near, then the dust will return to the earth as it was, because that's where we all go when we die. And the Spirit will return to God who gave it, because eventually we're going to go one place or the other. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. He's saying it again. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Anybody ever read the book of Proverbs? Yeah. Yeah. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. You need to make sure that you're saying what's true, right? Amen. The words... Of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails. Anybody ever uh, hammered a nail in and it just was so perfect and smooth? Oh, man, it felt good to hit that nail right on the head, and it went right in. Or the time that you hit the nail and it went... <laughs> oh, man, I hate when that happens, right? That sucker just bends to the right, and then you're trying to bend it back. Oh, can I just hit it like this? Oh, and it just never goes in right. <laughs> Man, I want to make sure my words come out like well-driven nails. But you've got to study the Word, right? Amen. God, train my speech and what I should say with the Holy Spirit, Father. Help me. Given by one shepherd, and further, my son, be admonished by these, of making many books there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. He's saying, I've gotten weary just from all the studying I've done. <laughs> but he says this, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Here, I figured it out. If you want to know what it is, folks, the wisest man's about to tell us. I figured it out. <coughs> Everything's vanity, but here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. 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 Right. Here's the conclusion. All right? For this is man's all. This is what God expects from us. This is the conclusion of all the study that I've done. The wisest man of all, all right? He's smarter than all of us, I can guarantee you. The wisest man of all said, all the studying that I've done, I've become weary from it. I've studied so much that I'm just wore smooth out. I've looked at everything around me. I've studied. I've analyzed. I've figured it out. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God, which is respecting, which is a reverential fear and awe that you have for Him, that you realize that He is the God of all things. And I understand that I am just a little ant compared to you. And if you tell me to do something, I say, yes, sir. Amen. Because he says, and keep his commandments. You see, if you truly respect God, you will do what he says. Amen. You truly love God, you'll do what he says. Amen. 
You won't have some superficial thing where me and you got an understanding. You tell me what to do, and I say, I don't have to. And you go do this and that. Yeah. No, there ain't no special deals for you folks. <laughs> it's fear God and keep His commandments, or you're living in vanity. But he says, this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or or evil. See, everything that you do does not go unnoticed, whether it's good or evil. Every good little thing that you've done that you feel like you've not gotten recognition for, God sees what it is. And what you have done in secret, God will reward you openly. That's what it says. Right? There's coming a day when you will be rewarded for everything that you have done for Him. Everything. He does not let anything go forgotten. He sees it all. He knows it all, and He knows why you did it. He knows your intention behind it. Whether you did it for the applause and the attaboys, or whether you did it because you wanted to please God. He knows. You can't fake Him out. I always thought God would be a good football player. You can't juke Him out. On defense, man, you're going to get tackled. It is Super Bowl, son. You had to throw something in. <clears throat> but nevertheless, God will bring every work into judgment. Everything you've ever done. Everything. Including every secret thing. You know, you, you may feel like you're at home and you're by yourself and nobody else is watching, but God's eyes are beamed right on you. Amen. <laughs> and maybe that'll help you. To not do to to do bad things because if you visualize him sitting right there next to you at all times, it makes it real hard. I'm gonna tell you, you're sitting there, you're you're watching something that you know you shouldn't be watching, and then you look over and you say, "Oh God, I better turn that off." That's how we need to look look at it, though, folks, because he is, he is, he's watching everything you're doing. You can't get away with nothing. That's right. Sometimes we feel like we can. But He's watching everything you're doing. Let's have a heart and desire to want to please Him. Not make Him upset. You know, the Bible also tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit that is in you. Don't grieve God. Not only is He sitting beside you, but He's inside of you. He is right there with you everywhere you go. Don't make Him have to be a part of whatever sin that is that the devil's trying to trip you up with. He's trying to get you to fall. He's trying to keep you down because that's all sin will do. Yep. Fear God and keep His commandments. Don't live in vanity any longer. <laughs> Don't live a life that is worthless. Right? Right? of no value, of no significance, of no importance. I don't want to live that way. I want my life to matter. I want my life to have meaning. When I die, I want to have done something with it. I don't want on my tombstone to say, well, he existed. <laughs> we all exist. But only true life comes when you live it for him. That is the only way your life will ever have any matter or any importance or any significance is when it's lived for Him. Amen. When your desire is every morning, God, what can I do for you today? Yes. That's how you need to start your day. And then at the conclusion of your day, Lord, thank you for helping me to serve you today. Amen. With your life. Because He gave up His so that you would go on living for Him. He didn't give up His life so that you would go on and keep sinning. He gave up His life and He said, go sin no more. Right? Right. Yep. So that needs to be our all. That needs to be the conclusion of our own thoughts and what we think about life as well. I'm going to fear God. I'm going to respect Him because He deserves it. And I'm going to do what He tells me to do. Some of it may be hard, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make sure that I do it to the best of my ability. Because I want to put a smile on his face. I don't want to put a frown. 
I don't want to draw a tear from his eye unless it's a happy tear. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 39, 4 through 6. <clears throat> Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. Anybody feeling frail this morning? Anybody feeling piddly? <laughs> Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadth. That's a handbreadth right there. Seems pretty short, doesn't it? And my age is as nothing before you, even the oldest in this room. Wow, that makes you feel young, don't it? <laughs> Certainly every man at his best state is but a vapor or a breath. It's gone. And then it says the word Selah, which is a word of meditation. He's telling you to think about this now. Think about it. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He, hips, he heaps up riches and does not know who, who will gather them. Working all your life to give it to somebody else. Or all your, accomplishment, all your accomplishments going for somebody else to use and abuse. Help us to know the measure of our days and how frail we are and how quickly our lives are passing away. And then in that, what can I use it for? What can I do with it? If my life is vanishing away so quickly, what can I do with the remainder of it? How can I best purpose each day in servitude to you and your kingdom? Not to me and my little kingdom, but to what you want me to do. You created me, and you created me with a purpose. You have a specific plan for my life. Help me to walk in it every single day to fulfill the purposes you have laid out for me. Because every day is ordered and ordained by God for you to do something. Who knows what it is? That's something for you to work out with Him in your own prayer time. Spend time in prayer drawing that out of him. God, show me. Cause me to walk in the way. Lead me. That's why so many scriptures talk about lead me, guide me, direct my path, show me what to do because that's how we need to be thinking. Show me how I can serve you today. Lead me, guide me, even if it's got to be breadcrumbs along the way. Anybody remember the story of Hansel and Gretel? About the breadcrumbs, right? So they could find their way to what, where they needed to go, what path. God, throw breadcrumbs down for me. And show me what I need to do for you. And I believe He will, folks. Every day He will have something. It may be a day of study. It may be a day of prayer. It may be a day of praise. It may be a day of just talking about God to everybody you meet. But it will be a day of something for you to do for Him. Pray and He will give it to you. Anybody want that? Yes. Amen. He'll do it, but you've got to have the want to. He can't make you do it. He just wants you to want to do it, right? Getting close to the end, all right? Super Bowl, several hours away. We're good. <laughs> Psalm 62, 9. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Whew. Your whole life is lighter than vapor. What are you going to do with it? Psalm 90, 12. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You want to be wise? Number your days. You know, think about it, folks. If you're in your 70s and 80s, how much time you got left? Not a whole lot, right? So number your days. What do I need to do with the rest of my days? What do I need to do with the rest of the life that God has given me? You may have lived a long life already. <laughs> Thank God. He, he wants you around for something, right? If you're still alive, if you still have breath, that means He still has a purpose for you. Amen. That means you still have a job to do. You may be retired from your natural labor, but you never retire from your eternal labor that God has given you. There's something that He still wants you to do while you're here. you got to say, what is it though? What is it? I want to do it. you got to have the want to, and then He'll show you. He will. Psalm 127.1 Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. 
Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Unless God helps you with your labor, you're laboring in vain. If you're trying to do things on your own, it's not going to come to success. It's going to fail. But if you're doing it in Him, it's going to succeed. Anybody want success? Yes. Yes. you got to do it with His help. That's what He's telling you. Psalm 144, verse 4. Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. We getting the, we getting the point yet? Your life is over before you know it. Some of you still feel like you were... Some of you still wake up and think, Man, where did my life go? <coughs> Seems like just yesterday I was in my 20s. Seems like just yesterday I was doing this. Man, where did my life go? It's because your life is a breath. <laughs> And then before you know it, it's gone. What are you going to do with that breath, though? If you had one last breath, what would you use it for? Would you use it to, to plead out to the masses, serve God, fear Him, and obey His commandments? What would your last breath say? Hopefully it would be in praise of Him, right? In, in honor of Him in some kind of way, but... If you have more than one, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You have more time to serve God. And some of you, your time's coming to an end. Some of you may not even know it, but you might die tomorrow because your next day is not promised to you. So if that be so, don't put off what you could do today. All right? Don't wait till tomorrow to say, okay, well, I'll do that. I'll start tomorrow, Pastor Brandon. Thank you for all this good truth today. I'll maybe get on it next week, all right? But not today. Today I'm going to have my fun. Don't live that way. <laughs> live with a sense of urgency that your very life could be taken from you at any minute. Because it can. There's a lot of people out there who did not see death coming. Matter of fact, I believe it was every one of them pretty much. Even some people who are told, hey, you got this amount of time to live, they die sooner than that. Sometimes it's not always as easy and clear cut as it may seem. You may think, well, I got a whole life ahead of me. I'm, I'm, I'm only 30. You know, I got a whole life to live. And then you die tomorrow. You get out on the road because the roads can be dangerous, folks. Even if you're a good driver, there might be somebody that comes out of nowhere who is not, who is a drunkard or whatever, and they crash into you and there you go. Your life's over, just like that. You had your whole life planned out and mapped out, and you were going to get right with God 20 years later whenever everything starts settling down. I'll get right with God in my own time. And it never comes. You get right with God today. Amen. And you live for God today the Amen. best that you possibly can. That's right. Because He gives you His best every day, doesn't He? Thank you, Lord. I got a few more scriptures. I'm going to leave you full this morning. Matthew 15, 8 through 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Let's not be that way. Let us not... Honor God with lip service, things that we know He likes to hear, but inside our heart is far from Him. Inside, we have our own agendas in mind. Inside, we want to go and sin as soon as we leave this building. No, let's not be that way. Let's truly worship Him in spirit and in truth because this is the way God requires us to worship Him. Not with vain, lip service, you know the words to the song, good job, you have some rhythm, you know how to sing a little bit, but inside your heart is full of wickedness, get that out. No sir, no ma'am, help me to truly worship God. Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time because the days are evil, help us to know how to number our days and redeem the time in a sense, to where we know how to use it wisely. Help us to use our time wisely. Here's another one, Colossians 4 or 5. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, those who are outside of the church, those who are outside of God, redeeming the time with them as well. 
If you know that you work with somebody who is not a Christian, maybe you need to spend some time redeeming that time with them and sharing the gospel with that person. Because you know already that your next day is not promised. You may be saying, oh, I'll talk to them about it next week. Man, I just don't know what to say. Well, get to where you can know what to say. Talk to the one who gave you the lips and gave you a mind to formulate a sentence and ask him what to say to that person and don't let another day slip because the next day you might come to work and say, hey, where's so-and-so? Oh, he ain't here. What happened? Oh, he's dead. Well, dang, I was wanting to tell him something, but now I can never tell him. And man, he's probably going to hell. Don't let that be the last thing on your mind what you think about them. You use every second as a chance to obey God and redeem that time and share the gospel with your co-workers or your family, which is even more important. Amen to that. If you've got a family member that you know of, Miss Cheryl, your son, you told us this morning that your son, you don't think he's saved. Spend every ounce of your energy trying to share with him the gospel before he dies. He, he tells me all the time, he said, Mom, he said, I'm tired of you talking about it. Yeah, said, that's oh, fine. Sorry. You make him tired of it. Exactly. And that's what you got to do sometimes. You wear them out. <laughs> you wear them out. The next time that they see you coming, they, they're going to know, man, I'm going to hear an earful today about God. <laughs> yeah. You make sure they can't stand it. Until they finally start saying, thank you for doing that for me. Thank you that you didn't let me go. Amen. I guarantee you they'll appreciate it. That's right. If they ever come to the truth, they'll be thanking you. Oh, I see why you did it now. Yep. Man, it's so good being on this side of things. I see how important it really is. But don't ever be scared of how they're going to treat you or don't be worried about the outcome. You just do your job. You just do what God tells you to do and let the chips fall where they may. Everybody's got a pesky thing called free will. And everybody's got a choice to make on their own. But you don't worry about that. You just worry about spreading the gospel. Let the seeds fall where they are. Sometimes it's going to be on that stony ground. Sometimes that bird, the devil is going to come snatch that seed away. But sometimes it's going to fall on that good ground and it's going to grow and it's going to prosper and they're going to be in heaven and it's going to be because you didn't quit. Amen. And it's Amen. going to be because you decided to speak up and tell them the truth Amen. that they needed. Right. And we all need somebody like that. We all need somebody like that. And you might need to be the one person that they're going to have in their life that will do it. Because they got all these other people that are surrounding them that ain't going to say a word. And you're the one person that can to them. But we all got a voice. You just have to be willing to use it, right? Amen. Two more scriptures. Everybody okay? Amen. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, or brought low, I know how to abound or brought high. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Thank Man. you, Lord. He can help you in every state that you are in. You feeling depressed? Well, He can get you out of that. You feeling upset? Well, He can bring a smile to your face. But to know how to know how to live in every circumstance. Be content with whatever you have, and He will bring strength to you. He will help you to be able to do all things through His strength. Isn't that awesome? 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If you are working for God, your labor is not in vain. Man, that makes me feel good. You know, I like to make, I like to make Christian videos. I like to make videos uh, on my YouTube channel. And I make a lot. I've made over 700 and something videos. And it's fun to me. I just like that kind of thing. And 
for a while, I felt down about no feedback and very few views. And but I spent hours putting together these things and hours filming them, hours studying for them, and it just feels like nothing's coming, nothing's working. Uh, no feedback, nobody's liking it, nobody's sharing, and I share a video, uh, share a video, please share it, nobody shares it, I'm like, ah, oh, useless, vain, nothing's happening. And I, and I pray, God, help, help, help somebody, you know, help somebody to, to get something good from this, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I made this video, and, and a video I felt like God wanted me to make, and then all of a sudden, everybody out of nowhere sharing it. And I'm like, whoa, this is more than I've ever seen, you know, and everybody in the world just giving me good comments and feedback, and I'm like, man, you know, and it helps me to realize that it's not in vain. Even when I don't see the fruits of my effort, somebody behind the scenes is getting something from it, whether I ever know it or not. And we need to take comfort in that. One person from around the world may get a hold of one of my videos, and that one person may be changed forevermore, and I may never know about it until I get to heaven. That's okay. Same with your efforts. Whenever you're serving God and you're spreading the gospel and you're sowing into somebody and you're not seeing a thing from this person and you may never see it in this life, one day when you get to heaven, God may say, because you never gave up, because you didn't quit, because you kept sharing with them the truth, they did come to me. You didn't know it because you died and you moved on and you were with me whenever it happened, but because you kept planting those seeds, it finally sprouted. Yeah. And they finally came to me. And they always look back at that time when you were sharing it with them. And it was because of what you did and what I was able to do through you that was able to get them. And some of you might have that same thought about somebody in your life right now. It was because of what they did and God did through them that was able to get me to where I need to be now. And we all have somebody that God has used to plant that seed. And there's always been somebody that came along and watered that seed and nurtured and took care of the growth. And God brings that increase, thankfully. But nevertheless, we have to have that desire to want to do it, don't we? Yeah. And if you do, if you ever get to that point, which hopefully everybody in this room will, I can't make you and God can't make you. You've got to want it yourself. But if you ever do, you're going to be glad you did. Your life has true meaning now. When you wake up, it's not all about you and how depressed you are now. It's about, I get to serve God with my life. And I have a purpose. And I have meaning. And I have value. And there is a plan that I can walk in. And there is a path that I can walk down. And He will direct me and give me the words to say whenever I need to say it. And when you're living this way, man, you're going to be fulfilled. You will have a fulfilled life and you will be excited for the next day and what is in store. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us this privilege. And that's what it is, a privilege and an honor that you can serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the God of all things. You get to serve Him. It's not some natural king or some anybody else in this world, but it's of the heavenly realm, the God of the universe. Thank you, Lord, for that honor. All right. Um, I feel like I need to encourage you in this. If you feel like you have anybody that you know who needs to be here, if you feel like, man, this, this would have helped them or this, this would help them in their life or I know they would get something good out of coming here, invite them and keep inviting them. You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard somebody say that they've gotten something good out of what's going on here. And I'm not saying they're taking any credit for it because it's all of God. 
Amen. And it may not even be because of what I've said or done, but it might be just because of just the, the community of this, the fellowship of this. Like Dad was saying this morning, I just like how we can all come together and, and be able to talk and be able to praise God together and hear God. It becomes a family. Amen. And there's something beautiful about having a family and where you can come and just be. And just feel good about it. And, and know that when you come here, you're going to feel the Lord. And you're going to get something good. And, and don't hold that to yourself, but invite everybody you know. All your friends, all your family. And even if they keep telling you no, know, keep inviting them. Yeah. Because they might get just tired of hearing you say it and come just for the sake of you. that You'll, they'll, you'll get off their back. Well, I came that one time. Don't you remember? Just keep inviting them because once they get in here, God can get a hold of them. Amen. He can get a hold of them out there too, but there's just something about when you step through those doors that He can really get you. Amen. And when He really gets you, man, sometimes you don't want to leave. Right? Man, I want more of that. Man, give me more. Yeah. Amen. So Lord, help us with that. Help us to be encouragers. Help us to to reach out to our family and friends, to invite them to be here. But also, Father, help us to know how that we may number our days so that we don't live a life of vanity any longer. No more vanity of vanities. But we live and we know how that we can serve you, that we can respect you the way that you deserve and, and obey your commandments. For this is our all. Help us to remember that every single day that we need to show you the respect that you deserve and that we should live that day in obedience to you to prove our love to you. To prove that love. And Father, show us how we may best serve you with our lives every single day. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.